here with us today, Teresa, and we hope that you will make her feel welcome here in our church today. Also, Matthew's Gospel and uh, our message today on the song, the subject of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, of course. We're going to read the first 10 verses of Matthew chapter 28. <clears throat> In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. All right, if you take your Bibles and if you still have them in your hands, Matthew chapter 28, we're going to be referring back to the account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, throughout this message, but we're going to study it as a fact of history and the ramifications for us in our lives today. It never loses its luster. This is the focal point of all humanity, past, present, and future. Everything devolves around this and to this. The fact that uh, we have a Savior who died for us and the fact that he also lives for us. Hallelujah. And that we can live with him forever. I've entitled this message, A Funeral Canceled. Amen. A Funeral Canceled. Amen. The ladies, at the end of the Sabbath, made their way to the sepulcher of the Lord Jesus Christ to prepare his body for the funeral. Uh, this was going to be a last farewell. Didn't their minds get changed? What a glorious event. Amen. <clears throat> to find the sepulcher empty and the Lord risen. Uh, no need for a funeral. I've conducted quite a few funerals in my life. Never enjoyed that part of my ministry. An awful lot of them were uh, close friends. Quite a few people from this church have gone on to be with the Lord. It was my privilege to have services for them. But uh, this funeral was a funeral of great joy. Hallelujah. And great gladness. And it Hallelujah. affects all the funeral sense of all of God's people. Amen where death is not the end for the people of God. Uh, he made the way, he made the victory uh, over sin and death and hell. So those who are, are unsaved, are saved loved ones who have gone on, they are with the Lord now, and we're going to meet them again someday and be Amen. with him and with them for all of eternity. 
There are two things, that, uh, two commands that are given uh, to these uh, visitors to the sepulcher on that first Easter Sunday. Number one, number one was come and see in verse six. Come and see. That's an invitation. That's a command. That is good news. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are so many people in the world today that are not Christians, they're not saved, and they're not thinking of ever being saved because they're not going to believe unless they can see. Yeah. There's none so blind as they that will not see. Amen. So we have the testimonies, we have the witness, we have the recorded word of God, we have the angelic chorus proclaiming it to all the world. We have it says they set aside each year in our calendar to try and celebrate, remember this incredible and grand event, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So why not come and see for yourself? Look at the scriptures, for they are they that testify of him. Amen. We don't serve a dead savior. Hallelujah. He's alive. Yes. And because of this, we shall live with him forevermore. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So come and see. Look for yourself. It's there to be seen. And the testimony is sure and real. A second command was given to them on this day. They had only two things to do. Neither one of these things was in their hearts and minds on that day. This is going to be a sad day, a day of farewell, uh, uh, a day of uh, uh, goodbye forever. Uh, no, come and see, and then go and tell. <laughs> go and tell. Amen. Of all the religions in the world, we've got the best. Hallelujah. Ours is the true one. Ours is the right one. And ours is real. Amen. So why should we keep it a secret? Amen. Go and tell. Have you listened to a commercial recently? They're not shy about trying to convince you that their product is the best one in the market, the most economical, and will make you the happiest if you'll use it. I don't think very many of them are being honest, do you? No. No. But we have a story to tell, and what a story it is. The greatest story ever told. Yes. We have salvation through the Lord Jesus Christ who died and gave himself for us on the cross. But it doesn't end there. That's not the end of the story. He rose from the dead and has ascended on high and he's waiting for us to come and be with him there. Yes. If we'll but believe in him. Yes. What a tremendous thought this is. What a great invitation. What a glorious future. What a hope. What rejoicing. This should be to our hearts and lives. This world is no friend to grace, is it? Amen. No. That's not a pleasant place to live anymore, yeah. is it? No. <clears throat> Every day, don't we wake up with a, bit, a little bit of foreboding in our hearts, wondering what life is going to throw at us on this day, and what it's going to be like when we come to the end of it? But we can always look up. Yes. We can come and see. We can go and tell. Yeah. We have a living Savior. Hallelujah. He's in the world today. Yes, he is. We know that he's living no matter what men may say. Amen. He is our Lord and our Christ. And he's with us. Bless you. He's with us. Hey. There's nothing that can touch us, nothing that can hurt us, nothing that can affect Amen. us except with his permission. Amen. He watches over us and cares for us. Uh, the Bible gives us many, many illustrations of this. The primary one is the shepherd and his sheep. Hmm. He's our good shepherd. How many times have you heard me tell you he's our shepherd and he's really, really good at his job? Amen. <laughs> he's our good shepherd. He's our great shepherd. He's our great shepherd. He's the greatest shepherd that has ever been because he doesn't care for... the us as animals he cares for us as his people amen he cares for us carefully as a shepherd does his sheep but we are his people and the sheep of his pasture and the psalm 23 tells us what a great great shepherd he is yes. 
So we can live the problems of this life because he is living Hallelujah. with us and for us. He's our good shepherd. He's our great shepherd. And one day soon he's going to be the chief shepherd. Amen. He's going to be in charge. He's going to rule the entire world. He's going to be king of kings and lord of lords. Yes. He's going to rule with a rod of iron in true righteousness and yes. true peace. Yes. Hallelujah. They will not learn war anymore when he is on the throne. Amen. This old world mm -hmm. is going to be changed. Hallelujah. With the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And what a change is going to is going to happen. And it's going to become a wonderful place in which we can live. If we are his people yes. and the sheep of his pasture. Hallelujah. What a great and a wonderful and incredible thing this. So if you're not familiar with it, come and see. Search the scriptures. For they are they that testify of him. And in them you find the gift of eternal life. <clears throat> I'd like to share some important truths about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are not going to be amazingly new to you. But they will still be amazing. Amen. Still be amazing. Why is the resurrection of Jesus Christ such an important thing? Number one. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is important because it proves that he is the Son of God. Amen. Proves that he is the Son of God. John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18, we read this. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I laid down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself, I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Yes, Lord Jesus. Christ's resurrection is important because it proves that he is the Son, the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Don't believe that? Go and see. <laughs> the people in Israel will be glad to show you the Holy Sepulcher. You can go there, but you won't see Jesus' body there. Amen. There won't be any casket or skeleton because he is risen. Hallelujah. Risen. Risen he is risen. Him. And this resurrection proves that he is the Son of God. The empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. It's important. Christ's resurrection is important, number two, because it attests to the truth of Scripture. Scripture is very, very true. Do you believe that? Yeah. Amen. You believe Absolutely. that? <clears throat> I was an avid reader when I was young, and I still read constantly. And uh, uh, it was it was our good fortune that one of the places we lived, we traveled to quite a different, few different places, different houses, but one of the places that we lived for several years was just, uh, our back door was just across the alley from the public library in the town. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, I really enjoyed uh, reading the books there. And fortunately, they had a lot of good books back in that day and age. I don't know what's going on now. But this is the good book. This is the best book. <laughs> this is God's book. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ teaches us that this is a true book. Amen. It is the only absolutely true book in the entire world. Amen. No matter how good an author might be and how much he might try, he cannot be perfect. Amen. That's why we have proofreaders. Mm -hmm. But this book, this book is true Amen. throughout. There's not a single error, not a single lie, and not a single mistake. Anywhere in this book. In Acts chapter 2, verse 31, it tells us he's seen this before. Seeing this before, the Holy Spirit spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This is from Psalm 16 and verse 10. By the Holy Spirit of God, put down in Scripture, 
um, many, many hundreds of years before Christ went to the cross. Amen. And so when they found the empty tomb, they saw the truth of Scripture with their own eyes. Come and see. If you don't believe it, go and look. <clears throat> Number three, it assures us the importance of Christ's resurrection assures us of our own future resurrection when we die. Yes. <clears throat> Do you know what's going to happen to you when you die? Yes, most people in the world this, and they they hope they're going to a good place. Have you ever heard that? I've heard that over and over and over again in my life. Uh, people say that, well, I hope I'm going to a good place. I'm trying. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, I'm following the golden rules almost completely. Um, blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, we, can, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Amen. You get that? Word of prophecy. We have a more sure, sure word of prophecy. And this word assures us that if we accept Christ as our Savior, that uh, uh, we are going to be resurrected, even though we may die. Yeah. We're going to live again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember Mary and Martha talking to the Lord Jesus Christ about their dead brother Lazarus? And Jesus said, he shall rise again. <laughs> and they, they weren't real sure about this. Um, and uh, he even made their comment, behold, he stinketh. He's been dead in the grave for four days already. Jesus says, come and see. Come and see. <laughs> And he told it to all the crowd, roll the stone away. And Lazarus came forth, floating, because he was still bound in the uh, grave clothes, all wound up. But his body came floating out of that grave. Why? Because the resurrection and the life was there. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus Christ. His resurrection assures us of our own resurrection when our time yes. comes to die. Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. There's going to be a resurrection someday. How do yes. we know it? Because Christ rose from the dead. Yes. Hallelujah. The fact has been set in stone, and the stone was rolled away. Hallelujah. Come and see. See it for yourself. Uh, all right, another point that, uh, that the shows that the importance of Christ's resurrection is this. It's a proof of future judgment. It's a proof yes. of future judgment. In Acts chapter 17, verses 30 and 31, and the times of this ignorance God winked at or cringed about. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, and that he hath raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. There's going to be a future judgment. How do we know that the judge isn't dead? <laughs> he rose from the dead, and he's alive forevermore. Amen. So there's going to be a future judgment. The resurrection is important because it assures us of a it's a proof of the future judgment of all mankind. It also is important because it's one of the central truths of the gospel. One of the central truths of the gospel. You can't be saved unless you believe that Christ rose from the dead. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us this, uh, that uh, it is uh, uh, the thing, one of the main things that God wants us to know. And so uh, he writes it down for us. 
Come and see. Look at it for yourself. Uh, in the first eight verses of 1 Corinthians 15, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and then he was buried, and then he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And uh, <clears throat> that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, and after that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, and of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. You don't believe in the resurrection? Come and see. Mm -hmm. Come and see. <clears throat> it is also the resurrection is important because it's the assurance of our future inheritance. The assurance of our future inheritance. In First yes. Peter chapter one and verse three, it says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ." which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead has given us a lively hope. Do you know what that means? It's a living hope. It's a hope that does not die. Thank you, Lord. If you get a new car, your hopes are raised that you're going to be able to get from A to B. <clears throat> but it's only a living hope as long as that car doesn't break down. Okay. Right? And we have a hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's not a hope in somebody who's dead and in the grave. <clears throat> because he lives, we shall live also. Amen. We have a living, living hope in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it is important. The resurrection of Christ is important because it, it is the foundation for Christ's heavenly priesthood. Christ's heavenly priesthood. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 7, we read about this. His priesthood is talked about quite a bit in the book of Hebrews, comparing it with the Aaronic priesthood of the Old Testament. His priesthood is superior. It is the better priesthood. And in chapter 7, in verse 23, we read this. And they truly, that is, the priests of the Old Testament were priests, were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. He's saying that they had to have a lot of priests in the Old Testament, in the tabernacle, and to worship there because eventually the priest was going to die. And so when that happened, they had to have another priest, and then they have another, and then they have another, and then they have another. But this man, according to Hebrews 7, 24, this man, because he continueth ever... Oh. hath an unchangeable priesthood. Thank you, Lord. Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Yes. For such a high priest became us. That's what we needed. He became us. He was our help in time of need. Come and see. <clears throat> he is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. Amen. Who needeth not daily as those high priests offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. Yes. So the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore Amen. as our high priest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My high priest is alive. Amen. So I can go to him and receive forgiveness of sins. Yes. Anytime wow. in my life. And finally, uh, the importance of Christ's resurrection. He gives the power 
for our Christian lives. The power for our Christian lives. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This shows us the importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. What an incredible, incredible act, piece of history this is. Amen. We do well to mark it out as a day to be much observed and to be remembered. All right, so that's my introduction today. <laughs> now you can start looking at your watches. Because <laughs> we're going to go to the message. <laughs> I want you to notice this way, speak about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I'm just teasing you there. I'm not going to preach on and on and on. But uh, there are some more things that I want to share with you today on the subject of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I want you to notice the commands that go with the resurrection of Christ, which are still in effect today. Commands that we should still be observing. All right? Um, in uh, um, the, t the text that we read about uh, the resurrection of Christ, we could have read uh, several of them, uh, but in Matthew chapter 28, the commands that we see there, now the first command is, in verse 5, fear not ye. Fear not ye. You know, when I listen to the news, and I try not to, but when the news is on and, and I hear, and the things that are happening in the world right now, they're pretty bad, aren't they? Amen. And as far as I can tell, there unprecedented things are taking place. And it looks really bad. Anybody with any sense has to sit back and wonder, is there any hope for humanity? Well, there is a hope. Hallelujah. And our hope is in Christ. Amen. Uh, and so, he tells us, the, 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 the people that were there at that, at that time and finding out that he wasn't dead, he was alive, they were commanded, fear not ye. That's the first command they were given. Don't be afraid. Amen. Can I share that with you today? If you know Christ is your Savior, don't be afraid. Amen. Because he's not dead. Hallelujah. He's alive. Amen. He's alive. Thank you, Lord. And he's still in he's still in control. He's still in command. Uh, isn't it interesting that uh, uh, nobody had to carry him? They they went there to carry him out of the tomb and anoint his body for the burial and so on and so forth. Nobody had to carry him out. Amen. He came out on his own. They didn't have to roll the stone away. He was coming out, <laughs> no matter whether the stone was there or not. Amen. Uh, so. We don't need to fear anything when we have the Lord as our Savior. Yes. We serve a living Savior. Hallelujah. He's in the world today. And uh, as we contemplate that, then we can face everything without fear. Amen. <coughs> because He is alive. He's omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. He can take care of us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He's our shepherd, and as I said before, he's very, very good at his job. Ah, uh, oh, fear not. Now that's a command. Can you remember it? Can you obey it? Can you follow it through? Yes, Lord. Uh, in the wedding ceremonies, they, they say, till death do us part. Uh, no, even in death, we're not going to be parted from him. Amen. His or ours. He rose. Because he lives, we shall live also. Hallelujah. So, don't be afraid. Amen. Don't be afraid. Christ is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's alive. He is alive. The second command is found in verse 6 of Matthew 28. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. 
Come and see the place where the Lord lay. I've already challenged you with that today. If you need further proof, you can get on a plane. You can go there and you can look. But you're not going to find the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he's not dead. Yes. If you need to, go and look. Or you can just believe what the Bible says. What the witnesses saw. What they didn't see was a body. Amen. What they saw was a living, reigning, powerful, miracle-working Savior. Amen. Who has ascended up on high and interceding for us with the Father right now. Thank you. A third command is found in verse 7. Go quickly and tell. Go quickly and tell. We've got good news. Amen. We've got the best religion in the world and the only true religion in the world. We serve a living Savior. We need to be going out in the highways and byways and compelling people to come in. We need to be telling them. We're commanded to tell them. Uh, there is a branch of the church in Christianity, and they call themselves the evangelicals. Have you heard of them? The evangelical Christians? Well, I are one. <laughs> uh, we all should be one. That's what, uh, every Christian church should be evangelical. We should be going out and telling Amen. the good news. We serve a living Savior. Hallelujah. He's in the world today. We know he's living. An empty grave is there to prove that our Savior lives. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, go and tell. Yes. Go quickly and tell, it says. Go ye into all the world, it says. Amen. And in verse 10, we have a fourth command. Based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Come what may, your Savior lives. Yes. Now, who your, no, no matter who your enemies are, no matter what your problems may be, and there will be problems and there will be enemies. Amen. But be not Amen. afraid. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Don't be afraid because your Savior lives. Yes. If you know him as your Savior, then you've got a wonderful, wonderful life laid out for you. Amen. So don't be afraid. Come what may. Trust in him. Amen. So we have these four commands. Uh, that were given to the people at the, that were witnesses of the resurrection. We also have some facts that are given to us here, and we should carefully note them today and every day of our lives. We have some facts. In verse 6 of Matthew chapter 28, it gives us a fact. He is not here. Amen. He is not here. He is not in a sepulcher. He's not in a sepulcher. He's not here. Uh, if I get in the area where my parents are buried, I try and make it a point to go by the cemetery and to visit the place where their bodies are buried. But one of the great blessings of going there is to know their, bo their bodies are here, but they are not. Amen. They're with the Lord in heaven. He is not here. In the grave. He has risen. He's risen. gone before you. Go and see. Go and talk to him. And so they started to go and they met him. What a wonderful day. Amen. What a glorious reunion. Mm -hmm. They who were so woe begotten. They who were so crushed in their spirits. They who were so fearful. They were so saddened. What a horrible thing it was. We've been studying the crucifixion of Christ on our Wednesday night Bible studies. And what a terrible thing it was. What a terrible ordeal he went through. And they, his own relatives, loved ones, disciples, they had to see these things unfolding. What a terrible, terrible thing. But he's risen now. Risen indeed. Amen. He's not on the cross anymore. Amen. He's not in the grave. Amen. <laughs> He's risen. Hallelujah. He's risen. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And so, what a great thing it's going to be when we get to see our risen Lord. Yes. 
How wonderful that's going to be. A, a, another fact and, and that is given here is that he goeth before you. Verse 7. He goeth before you. Do you know that you can't go anywhere in this world if the Lord hasn't already been? Amen. The Lord is going before you. We've, re we've been studying the book of Jonah in our Sunday school time. Uh, and uh, uh, Jonah, he was commanded to go to Nineveh, and he didn't want to go there for whatever his reasons were. He went in the opposite direction, and, uh, uh, but the Lord was there. <laughs> he fled from the presence of the Lord, it says. Fled from the presence of the Lord. Well, here, here is a, a fact. Um, he, he has gone before us Amen. in our lives. Wherever you go tomorrow, he's already there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Wherever. If it's dangerous, he's there. Amen. If it's difficult, he's there. If it wearies you, he's there. He has gone before us. Yes. Everywhere, including eternal life. In Thank heaven. you, Lord Jesus. And at the towards the end of this chapter, the Lord Jesus Christ appears to them. Matthew chapter 28. <clears throat> and he speaks to them in verse 20. He says uh, that he wants them to go into all the world and teach the gospel uh, to all nations, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. Now notice how he ends it. Lo, I'm with you always. <coughs> now they had just gone through this ordeal of seeing their Lord, whom they had great faith in and great confidence in, and who they were looking for, for their future blessings, future rewards, they just seen him arrested by scoundrels, bound, led away, cruelly questioned, smitten on the face, to, and the Greek word there that we've been studying Wednesday night indicates they hit him hard enough with each blow this is with the Sanhedrin now, the Jewish leaders, not the Roman soldiers. They hit him hard enough each blow to leave a scar. Then he went to the Romans and was horribly mangled. And then he went to Calvary yes. and he went to it there. And uh, um, they, they, they knew him. They heard him preach. They saw him perform miracles. They had their faith in him. They became believers in his great power and uh, that he was the Messiah. Uh, and, and, and then all of a sudden he's taken away and he's cruelly crucified and they see him dead. They see the spear in his side and the blood coming out, gushing out. They see his body taken down by Joseph and Nicodemus and carried away and put in the sepulcher and a stone put upon the sepulcher. And then they have to wait for the Sabbath day to be over before they can go and put anointing oils and, and perfume upon his dead body. And uh, then, then all of a sudden they get this incredible news. He's not dead. Hallelujah. Can anything be better than that? <laughs> yes. Matthew 28 and verse 20 Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Oh. We're celebrating today and commemorating that there was a time in the past when Jesus died, but he rose again. And that's an incredibly wonderful thing, but it gets better than that. He is gone before us. Amen. And he's going to be with us always, wherever yes. we are, Thank you, even to the end of the world. And when we come to the end of our lives, we're just going to be beginning our lives. Yes. Amen. Lives with him forever. If, <coughs> if you have repented of your sins and accepted him as your Savior. Yes. That's a big if. There's no if about whether he's alive or not, whether he rose or not. There's no question about that. The question is, 
are you going to live with him in his life in heaven? So I'd like to close this message this, this morning by asking you this question. Wherever you are in the world right now or in this building, if you had a time in your life when you've repented of your sins and accepted what Christ did on the cross for yourself, made him your Savior. If you've never done that, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. It won't always be the case. Why don't you come and see for yourself? I know Christ lives because when I was 10 years old, I asked him to come into my heart and save me. Yes. He's been with me every day since. Hallelujah. You can have that experience as well. You don't have to join this church. You don't have to become part of this denomination. You don't have to put money in the offering plate. You don't have to do a lot of good deeds. All you have to do is come and see for yourself. Amen. He's alive. Hallelujah. We don't have an idol that we worship. For we serve a living Savior. Hallelujah. He's Amen. in the world today. Yes. We know that he's living whatever men may say. He walks with us. He talks with us. Yes, Lord Jesus. So go along our way. But I just urge you today, wherever you are, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, won't you do so today? Amen. And receive the life that only He can give. Let's take our hymn books and turn to number 309. 309 is your all on the altar. If we sing, as we sing this closing song, if you have never had a time in your life when you've accepted Christ as your Savior, and put your faith and trust in the ever-living one. I invite you to do it as we sing this closing song. Wherever you are, you can kneel right there, wherever you are in the world. Those of you who are here, if you've never done this, you can come and kneel to the front if you like. But the invitation is there. Come and see. Come and see for yourself. Let's stand together as we sing number 309 in closing today. Yeah. yeah.
we do appreciate you being here.